Hi, and welcome to our brief tour of the mobile control application for NetSport Manager, available for iOS and Android tablets and smartphones. As you can see on the screen in front of us, we have a range of NetSport applications, and today we'll be viewing the Manager app on an Android tablet to highlight the key features. So let's select the Manager app and begin. So this is the main UI for the NetSport Manager Control app. And as you can see, it's broken down into two key areas. On the left, we have the navigation UI, which is a tree view allowing us to view all computers, recently connected computers, browse and discover new computers across the network, as well as selecting and viewing just active computers. And subsequently, we can also configure gateways for connectivity of computers over the internet. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see we've also got our settings and pin connect features. Settings we'll cover in detail later on in this presentation, and pin connect is a new feature that allows us to quickly handshake with remote devices. So on the right hand side, we have the main view window, which allows us to show either icons or real time thumbnails of each connected device. By selecting a particular PC, we can automatically connect to that remote PC and the icon color changes to denote an active connection. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see we have our main feature toolbar, allowing us to select whether we want to view the screen of the remote PC, chat with the PC, send it a message, capture an inventory, and disconnect that PC, or ultimately remove it from our known list of computers. Of course, once that device is connected, it would appear in our active section, denoted by the number one in the count record. We can also select multiple devices by pressing and holding an icon and then we can select multiple devices as we can see here. As each is highlighted we can then apply with a single action a connect or disconnect state. In this case let's connect to all those computers. Okay so now we're connected to our remote computers let's jump to our active view and we can see a small thumbnail that is being displayed in real time for each of the remotely connected devices. Now we can adjust the size of those thumbnails to make them more visible by using the right hand menu as shown here and we can adjust the slider to scale the thumbnails to utilize the space presented to us. So here we've adjusted and we're showing fairly large thumbnails on the screen for each of our remote devices and of course we can fine tune this depending on the number of connections so let's make them slightly smaller so we can see all six computers in real time on the screen. Now we've got those computers and we're remotely monitoring them. Of course, we may want to actually interact with a selected computer. So let's pick one PC here. And by selecting it, our view menu at the bottom is displayed. And now we can select to view. When we get the view option, you'll see we're given a quick guide as to the key gestures that are required using our remote support from our tablet. And once we jump into the PC, we have a remote Windows 8 computer that we're currently now remote controlling from our tablet. You'll see the chevron marker at the top of the screen. When we select that, it will drop down the net support menu with our range of supported features. So first of all, we can control the color depth of the information being sent back to our tablet PC, particularly useful over slow mobile connections where we want to minimize the amount of data sent. Next, we have our functionality or our actions menu, the most important being the ability to send a control alt delete keystroke combination through to a remote PC for log in and log out as well as initiating both chat and message sessions. Then we have our control mode dialog, which allows us to switch our modes between watching the remote screen, sharing where both parties have interactive capabilities on the desktop, or control mode where we lock out the remote computer. Now while we're viewing this screen, you'll see we have the ability to interact with a typical pinch and zoom approach being simulated on the screen here. So using finger gestures, we can pinch and zoom in and zoom out, as well as panning and moving about the remote display. Okay, so now we've finished remote controlling our Windows 8 device in this case, but of course it could be Mac or Linux desktop, as well as a Windows PC. Let's access the menu and select the X button to return to the main view. With that PC still selected, let's access one of our new features, inventory. And quickly the inventory report will be generated for a version 12 or later client, for earlier clients, it will take longer to generate that inventory report. And as you can see on screen, we have a quick overview of the key information regarding that PC. We can scroll down to see motherboard information, specifics as we can see at the bottom part of the screen for the network adapter, 
including multiple adapters the machine may have at the current time and as it scrolls down further video adapter information and beyond. The key point is to ensure that any mobile technician on the go has quick access to all of the key information that relates to the remote device they're wishing to connect to and manage. Once you have your inventory report, of course you might want to keep that or save it away for future access. So within the inventory dialog at the top right you'll see we have a share option that allows us to send a copy of that report to your Dropbox, Google Drive, email and so on. Or if you have access, print via Google's new cloud print service. So back to the main desktop and you'll see we have our range of connected PCs and we can pull up the same menu and start a chat session. As you can see we have a simple interface allowing us to type in and enter some textual references using the standard or supported keyboard on your Android device. As we type our message it's sent from our device which we perhaps in this example could have named slightly better and where the remote user or users can textually respond to us within the conversation as well as you can see on the screen now. So back to the main menu and one of the areas we also want to have a look at is the config settings. As you can see here we can specify device name and display name which would have made my chat slightly more meaningful. Well it up with a display name and once these are done that will make my device much more identifiable for any remote device that I'm connecting to. You'll also see on the screen we have our key connectivity dialog allowing us to specify the port that we're communicating over as well as the IP subnets that we want to browse. So you'll see on this extended dialog that's now been added we can browse by a particular subnet and address range or of course provide support for browsing terminal server devices. If we scroll down further you'll see we have our security option where we can specify a unique security key and serial number to limit connectivity options as well as setting our default view modes that we use within the product both in terms of remote control, the color depth and of course the language of the keyboard that we intend to use for our remote control session. So back to the main menu and we'll see a new pin connect feature on the lower left of the display UI. The pin connect feature allows the operator and the remote user to identify and locate each other simply by entering a unique pin code to both ends of the connection. So on the screen in front of us the mobile user can either enter the pin code that's already been generated by the remote end user and once they enter that they'll have ability to connect to the user or they can request one being created by the pin code server. Once that's been created, they can share that with the end user and again initiate a connection. In the example here, we're going to enter a pin code that's already been generated by the end user. And as the operator enters the code in on the screen, 12345, and selects connect, that will automatically handshake and locate and then connect to the recipient end user PC. Back on the main screen, the final menu option to discuss is the gateways feature. The gateway feature allows Net Support Manager to communicate with devices across the internet over a secure HTTP gateway. There can be multiple gateways used by an individual or organization, and so for each gateway, they can be defined and specified within the control config, as you can see here. For each unique gateway, we specify a name, the IP address, and a unique security gateway key. In addition, authentication can be managed by unique operator usernames and passwords as well for additional security. On our Android device, let's jump to the desktop. One of the new features is the ability to add widgets for NetSport Manager on Android. There are three different styles of widgets, a single one for quick connect to a particular PC, and two that provide a summary list of all recent connections that you have undertaken with NetSport Manager. Once those widgets have been selected, as you can see on the screen here, we have a quick access using the Quick View widget to jump to a target PC directly from our Android desktop. So let's select Quick View Office PC, and you'll see we're instantly connected to the remote PC and directly onto their desktop, ready for active one-to-one -one remote control. So that wraps up the tour of the NetSport Manager mobile control app provided for free for existing NetSport Manager remote control users. 
Hopefully this tour's given you a good insight into the capabilities of our solution for Android and iOS based devices, as well as a sense of some of the new functionality and most importantly of all, the one-to-many capabilities provided with Internet Sport Manager. For further information, please visit www.netsportmanager.com for additional information, free evaluation copies and much more. Thank you for your time.